So let's um, go back to the um, upfront contract and talk about that part. Because this is where really the close happens on the what happens next slide. And um, I think that if we can be much more bold about it or more clear, okay, clarity Clarity is, is one of the keys to urgency, all right? Basically, when you're selling, there, there are two things that have to happen to increase urgency. So this is kind of the, the, uh, the increase urgency arrow <laughs> going up. So how do you increase urgency? Number one, you provide clarity as to the process, right? Clarity and then value, okay? So clarity and value will help increase, make it bigger. <laughs> so this is your urgency arrow. This is urgency for your client, okay? And so the two things that increase urgency is you've got to increase clarity and increase value, okay? So clarity is defining exactly the expectations of what you're trying to do for your client and what they need to do in order to get what it is they want and the value proposition is the, the value that they place on this policy is based on them, how this policy fills their urgency, fills what they need. You increase urgency by finding their pain and showing the what if. We don't, Joe Mayer, if we don't get this today, tell me about what your life's going to be when Joe dies tomorrow. Tell me what's going to happen. Or... 10 years from now, describe your life to me. Explain how are you going to make the mortgage payment? How much does your income drop? It's by asking questions. You create value only to the person that has a need and, and why and pain, right? I mean, I'll tell you what. You, you, if you're like fully, you know, when you go into a, uh, a convenience store and you see a bottle of water and you got to pay a buck 75 for you know this 16 ounce water bottle bottle water who would have thought in the 50s if you told people in the 50s that you'd have to pay money for water they think you're crazy okay but one of the most brilliant things is now bottled water right but I promise you if you haven't drank for three days and you you pay anything for a bottle of water, right? Because the urgency, the pain, the desire to fill a need is so strong. That's the value you pay through the pain process, all right? The other thing that helps increase urgency is you remove distractions. You remove distractions from the client. What are distractions? All the other crap. Remember last week we talked about, you know, the client bringing up this policy and that policy, and I've got this issue and that issue. All of a sudden, all these distractions were clouding her judgment as far as what she needed to accomplish to take care of her loved ones, right? So she lost clarity because of distractions. She reduced distractions, okay? And distractions can come in the form of too many choices, right? Some of y'all, I, I tell you what, man, more than three choices, and the client just starts mentally shutting down when they see all these choices. You know, back in, uh, I read this book, I forget what book it was in, but they did a study on a college campus. It was more of a behavioral analysis study. And what they were testing to see how, choice can affect decision-making. And so two sides of the campus, 
on one side of the campus they were selling jams and they had 28 different choices of jams. And then on the other side of the campus they only had two choices of jams. Now which one do you suppose they sold more jam? <laughs> yes, you're correct. The one that had only two choices. Because they only had two choices, it was easy to make a decision, this one or that one. Well, I like strawberry jam better than I like grape, right, or whatever. But 28 different ones, man, your brain just shuts down. There's too many choices. So you cannot provide distractions or create distractions. And if there are distractions that the client brings up, you need to clear the distractions down to what it is that they value and provide them clarity on what happens next so that we can get them what they're looking for. Does that make sense? Then you increase the possibility of urgency to make that sale happen, right? So to emphasize on the clarity side, this is the upfront contract on the what happens next, all right? And I always like to draw stuff out when I do this, all right, so um, one of the ways of doing this part of telling what happens next is, all right, okay, remember, and this is after doing a strong pain finding process, ask them, so what happens if, tell me more about that, what happens to your family when they can't pay the mortgage? How long do you think they're going to be able to stay in the home, right? Or uh, when you die, how is your family going to come up with the money? Can they come up with the money right away to bury you? You know that funerals, I mean, I've been talking to a couple people at funerals that have been through funerals recently within the last year. I mean, we're talking 20 grand for a good, nice funeral, right? A funeral befitting of your, you know, how much you care about that person. They're, they're 20 grand easy, 18 to 20 grand. So like when we're writing $10,000, $15,000 final expense policies, gang, man, you are totally undercutting them because they're gonna have to come up with more money. Particularly if they're younger now, like, you know, 35, 40, you know, 15, I mean, if they're that, yeah, 25 grand minimum. Do you think that funerals are going to be cheaper in the future more, or more expensive? Chances are it's going to be more expensive. Probably within the next 10 years, literally it could double. 10, 15 years from now, it could be double what it costs today, easily, because things have doubled. In fact, 18 years ago, the value of $1 today, you have to... You have to make a buck forty today to equal the same value as a dollar back 18 years ago when I first got in the business. One dollar and forty cents, right? So anyway, so this upfront contract part is well important. So I'd like to draw it out. Once you, they feel the pain, they want to solve their problem, they don't want you to leave without taking care of this, right? You did your pain process properly. Okay, then you, then you tell them, okay, this is what happens next. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you some options. I'm gonna show you probably three options. You're gonna pick one that's best for you. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill out this application form. I'm gonna ask you a bunch of health questions. All right. Now, you know that everything's on a database, Joe and Mary, right? You know that um, they have this thing called the Medical Insurance Board that is a repository of all your, any serious health condition, like your prescriptions, your, um, if you've been in the hospital, all your major diseases, anything that's been going on with you. It's all kept in a database, reported by your doctor, reported by emergency rooms, reported by everyone in the um, health industry. So, so that they have record of what you're doing so the insurance industry can make sure that, you know, everything that you're disclosing is correct, all right? So basically, we need to be accurate when, we feel that when I ask you these questions, as accurate as possible, because if there's something that you forget when we check off no, when it really should be yes, you may not remember it, but they're going to think that maybe you're wanting to hide it from them. 
And if you think you're trying to hide something, Joe and Mary, then it reduces your chance to get this coverage. Not, you know, not that you would ever lie about anything, but they would just think of it automatically as you not willing to disclose something that they know to be true about you. So very important that when I ask you the health questions, that we're as accurate as possible. Now, you know, if it were me, I'd love to give this coverage like right now, but I can't. So what we're going to do is we're going to send this application to the big insurance company out there, okay? In this case, it's CFG. And then we're going to, they're going to think about you. So right now, there's nothing that you have to think about. Does that make sense? You don't have to think about anything. Tonight's not a think about it. Night, pretty much, we're just going to find the option that best need, fits your needs and budget. We're going to fill out as accurate as possible the health questionnaire. We're going to send it into the insurance company. Now, and they're going to think about you. If they decide to approve you, which we hope, okay, then what they're going to do is they're going to come back and deliver to you the insurance policy, okay? And I will come by, and then we can review it together to see if there's anything that you want to change, if you think the price is great and you want to increase coverage, or if you want to decrease coverage, whatever. At this point, when you receive the policy, okay, we're going to, I'm going to draw a little stick figure of you and Mary, <laughs> okay? I'll draw a little hair there. <laughs> and then I'm going to come over, and then we're going to, you know, check it out and see if it's everything that you need in it, okay? If everything's great, great, all right? Now, and the chance that they deny your application, okay, I'm going to still come back to you, and then I've got um, a few other options for you for moving you into a different insurance category. I've got plenty of options there. Then we'll just go through this process again to find you the best rate and the coverage that you need to take care of that issue of um, making sure the house is paid off or you've got time to make decisions on the house. Does that make sense, Joe and Mary? Okay, and I just sit there and I shut up. I let them say yes, no, whatever. This is where you need to find out any objections that you're going to encounter. This is a great way to kind of surface those things, right, because you're very bold about what's going to happen next. There's, tonight's not a think about it night, right? To, tonight, this is what's going to happen. Based on what you told me, this is probably the most you'll ever talk, because remember, I said last week, it's a process of asking questions. This is the most in the entire process that you're explaining anything to them. You're not explaining the product as much as you're asking questions about what they need the product to do. Here, you're explaining the process, the upfront contract. So you're, they know that we're going to fill out an app, we're going to send it in, and all this is going to happen. And this is where you want to find out if there's anything that's up. What is, you know, um, what things are holding them back from making this decision? This is where you want to find it. After you do this, then you fulfill the contract, which is everything you said. You're going to show them three options. They're going to pick one. You're going to write it up. And then we're going to send it in. Boom. Done. Done deal. Or they're hung up with it. They just want to, they're just getting prices, whatever. And it's like, okay, I'm confused. I thought that you wanted to take care of it. You need to go back to the pain process, right? And then pain, ask more pain questions, and then see if they're willing to commit to this. This, this is done. This is, by the way, before you present the prices, okay? Present the quotes. Quote one, quote two, quote three. I don't know if that shows up. All right, option one, two, and three. If they don't agree to this process, then you get out of there. You get out of there fast. You get out of there, you know, do not pass go, do not collect $200. You get out of there. Do not give them any rates, okay? You are not there to be the rate giver. You know, we call it in the Sandler world an unpaid consultant. You are not going to give them prices. You're going to get up, you're going to walk out, and you're going to give them your car say, hey, when, when you're ready to take care of this, you know, here's my car, give me a call. All right? Or you can bam fam and say, you know what? 
why don't you guys think about this process, give me a call, I can come back next week, same time. You can be available next time, same time next week. Why aren't you going to give us prices? Joe and Mary, you're not ready to even make a decision. Why would I give you prices? Well, we want to know how much it costs in order to make a decision. Okay, is it really a budget issue or is it a need issue? Well, what do you mean? It, we want to make sure we can afford it. Okay. Would you like me to explain to you kind of my thoughts on budget? Yes or no? I mean, they can say, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, let me explain the budget thing. And I draw it out again because I like to draw things out for people that are visual. They love drawings. Okay. Okay, so here's your budget. Okay. Now, you just told me that Household income is like $7,000 a month, right? Okay, so here's your budget. Okay, isn't a budget kind of a, a priority list of what you pay off first, what you, you know, things that are more important here than things that are down here, then you run out of money, and then the nice-to-haves are 10, 9, 10, 11. These are the nice-to-haves. If there's any extra money left over after you've done all the necessary things you got to take care of. So let me ask you, you know, when you get your paycheck at the beginning of the month, explain to me what is the first thing that you take care of? Well, I mean, we pay our mortgage first. Okay, great. So your mortgage is the first thing. What's the next bill that's most important? Well, we both our cars are, you know, we've got bank loans for those, and that's how we get to work and how we you know, get the family around, so, you know, our car payments, okay, great. Okay, what else is important? Probably cable, right? You got NFL Sunday ticket. <laughs> I, I kind of joke about that, but for a lot of people, their cable bill is up there, you know, even over food, okay, and clothing and basic necessities. I say, well, what's next? They usually say utilities, probably, gas, electric, utilities, you know, um, food, whatever. They kind of do other things, all right? And I say, okay, well, awesome. So pretty soon you're going to run out of money, and then all these other things are nice to have. So when you're talking about budget, aren't, you're asking basically if the decision is down here between 8 and 9. What up here can go down to 9, and what up down here can go up to 8? Where can it all fit in? above this line. Isn't that what you're talking about? Basically what you're telling me is does that payment fit up in here, like right here, because that's the line, whether or not it fits in your budget. Because if it doesn't, then it goes to, you know, maybe taking a, um, a cruise, okay, putting money away for a cruise, you know, whatever else is down here, you know, buying a Corvette, that'd be nice to have, moving into a 10,000 square foot home, Whatever. I mean, that's down here, right? So you're trying to determine, you're telling me you're trying to determine if if it fits above the line or below, below the line, right? Okay, what I just did is I used an NLP process called reframing the argument. This whole thing is an NLP thing on reframing. Okay, so what you did is you reframed the budget to telling them how they're thinking, whether it's down here whether it's eight or nine, okay? And it's easy when you draw it out because you can point to it, okay? Now, I say, now, let's look at your top priorities. So you're paying your mortgage on your house. Let me ask you, if your house burned down, if it got broken into, if you had a flood, are you going to, is all that repair and stuff going to come out of your pocket or what do you have to protect against those? Say, so, well, I mean, we, well, obviously we have insurance, Oh, okay, so really it's not just the mortgage payment. Your insurance to cover the home is there to make sure that the mortgage that your house is taken care of. So we should probably put your insurance up there, right? Yeah, okay. Now let me ask you about your car. Uh, like if you get into a collision, if someone runs into you, um, does that come out of your pocket? Or, well, you know, insurance is mandatory in this state. Oh, Okay, so it's not just a car payment or mortgage payment. There's also an insurance payment right here too, right? Okay, again, you ask a question. Remember, this is all asking questions. You're not putting words in their mouth. You're pulling it out of them because you're asking questions. All right, so, huh, interesting. 
So you got insurance on the mortgage, you got insurance on the car payment, or on the car, huh? Now by this time, if they aren't brain dead, they should be following this. Okay, but if they're not, okay, so let me ask you, this is you, right? You, Joe, and maybe you, Mary, to bring this money in. Okay, there's your hair. <laughs> See, these two things you have insurance on just in case something happens, but who makes this budget possible? And then I shut the heck up and I let them answer that question. So is it really an issue of eight or nine, or is it more of an issue as far as putting it up here and then the lines drawn here? Maybe instead of NFL Sunday ticket and your you know mega cable channels, you drop it down and the money goes up here where it's in your priority system in your budget. So really, we're not really talking about budget, are we? You just want to, it sounds to me like, Maybe you're looking to feel more comfortable with the process. Is that right? And then, man, I'm selling. I am, I am relentless. I am selling, selling, selling. I'm closing them because I ask questions on the stupid budget thing. Because this is stupid. When, like, in your mind, you better be convinced that the budget excuse is not, a, not an excuse to protect your families. Yeah, they need to have money to do it, but it's not a decision on whether to do it or not. It's a decision down here on what goes below the deck on line, right? And you need to be convinced about that, because if you're not convinced, they're not going to be convinced. Duh! <laughs> Does that make sense? I find that more agents bring up objections because of the way they think about stuff, than their clients do, because you are projecting your objections into them. Like, you would think, oh gosh, I wouldn't pay that much for a policy. That's in your head. You know what happens? It's out of your words and out of your body language. You're conveying to them, right, that you wouldn't do it, and then they're getting those vibes, and then they wouldn't want to do it. You have no idea. They pick that stuff up. It's a big NLP thing, your own linguistic programming thing, that you are like putting into their head. So the thing in your head is you got to be convinced that it ain't no budget excuse. You got to be the first one that, that has to be convinced. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. All right. So the old guy stopped ranting. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to unmute and see if any. All participants are unmuted. So does anyone have any questions on that, or, or is this stupid? Is this crazy? Is this, like, nonsensical to you? Heck no, rock on. Awesome. <laughs> All right, man. So, oh, I'm getting some texts. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the elephant in the room. Daryl, I love it, man. You rock, dude. <laughs> All right, so, okay, we're getting to the end of the time. Um, All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. So I promise you, if you get this stuff on contract down, and you create that sense of urgency by increasing the value proposition by meeting their need and asking questions and finding the pain and feeling the pain, and provide clarity with the upfront contract, what's going to happen next, and removing all distractions, what you create is urgency. Now, isn't that interesting, creating urgency? If that's urgent for your client, how more urgent can you be about you and building your business and being urgent about this business? Remember, clarity. What it is you want from this business? Value. Is this business going to be the business that will help you get what it is you want? And I think the more you hang around hotspot meetings and listening to the TWCs and reading and and the, the alliance application that is going to provide clarity, is going to provide that um, value that this business can help you get that. And then the third thing, removing distractions, right, will help you create that sense of urgency of what you need to do in this business to move on in this business, to make more dials every week, to book 20 appointments a week. Man, tell me what problem that 20 appointments a week 
won't solve. It won't solve all of them, but I promise you 20 appointments a week will solve many of them. And so that the real problems that kind of surface after you get rid of the money issues are the real problems that you need to work on, like relationships with your family, relationships with your God, with God, right? Because your God's my God, <laughs> all right? So, man, 20 appointments a week, what do you have to do to get there? That's what I would be figuring out if I were you is, how can I book 20 appointments a week? What do I need to do next to book 20 appointments a week, man? Your problems will go away. By the way, with solves all problems too. So putting in with, driving depth, building the business will solve a whole bunch of those problems as well. So, man, I'm done. Rock on. I hope this helped. Let's do this thing. Let's kill it in the month of November. November's coming up, man. Let's go into November with momentum starting now. Are you going to get on the phone? Are you going to book 20 appointments? Rock on, gang. Appreciate y'all. Take care. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs>